Hello everyone and welcome to our class video about trigonometry applications. Our learning goal is that you'll be able to solve real world problems by applying the definition of an angle of elevation and an angle of depression. We've already done some real world problems in trigonometry, but these are some specific kinds that involve these terms, angle of elevation and angle of depression, and I want you guys to be familiar with what that means. Okay, so we obviously need to talk about what is an angle of elevation or an angle of depression. Let me give you the definitions, which you have on your page, and we'll walk through them, but then we'll draw a picture to help you, to help you understand it. Okay, so an angle of elevation is the angle formed by a horizontal line and your line of sight to an object above the horizon. So you'd be looking up. So this is the angle that you are looking up by up from a horizontal line. The angle of depression is like the angle of elevation, but it's with your, you looking down. It's the angle formed by a horizontal line and the line of sight to an object below the horizon. Okay, so if you look down, you're measuring the angle of depression. Alright, so let's put a picture to this to help you see it. Alright, so let's say we've got a, a friend Joe, and he is looking at his friend Jonathan, who is standing on top of some building. Okay, so let me draw in Joe's line of sight to Jonathan. Alright, so this is him, Joe, looking directly at Jonathan, and also Jonathan looking directly at Joe. That's their line of sight. Okay, both of these angles are compared to horizontal lines. So let me draw a horizontal line from where Joe is. This would be if he was looking straight ahead. The angle of elevation is the angle between those two. Okay, I'll use the r theta symbol for it. So this is the angle that he would have to look up above a horizontal line, or above looking straight in front of him. Jonathan looking at Joe has an angle of depression. Let me draw a horizontal line if Jonathan were looking straight ahead. Then when he looks down towards Joe, he sees him at an angle of depression. That's the angle be between the horizontal line and his line of sight. The only difference is whether Joe is looking up and Jonathan is looking down. You think you get it? Okay, now one thing I want to point out to help you avoid making some mistakes. The angle of elevation and depression are always compared to a horizontal line. Okay, it's a common mistake to compare it to a vertical line. As long as you remember to keep it with a horizontal line, you're good. Also, take a note, did you see this? The angles of elevation and depression are congruent because they are, can you tell me? They're alternate interior angles. Okay, so Joe's angle of elevation is congruent to Jonathan's angle of depression. All right, so let's look at an example. Noemi is 50 feet from the world's tallest totem pole, which me measures 173 feet tall. If her eyes are five feet from the ground, find the angle of elevation for her line of sight to the top of the totem pole. Okay, so obviously the first thing is we need to draw a picture. That's the main reason we're doing uh, this video is because you need to get used to taking the words and figuring out what picture it's talking about. Okay, so here's our friend Noemi, and she's looking at the tallest totem pole. I'm going to draw her line of sight to the top of the totem pole, because the angle of elevation is compared to her line of sight. Also, it's compared to a horizontal line, so I need to draw in a horizontal line as if she was looking straight ahead. Her angle of elevation is right there in between the two, in between the horizontal line and her line of sight. What else do we know from the information given in the problem? We know that she's standing 50 feet away from the totem pole. We also know that the totem pole is 173 feet tall. The other piece of information we have is that her eyes are 5 feet from the ground. Why is that important? Well, that's important because that's not included in the opposite side of the triangle. 
so the portion that is above her eyes is only 168 feet. That is the opposite from that angle. Likewise, the 50 is the adjacent in this question. Okay, so I guess we're ready to solve the problem then. Which trig function should we use? Well, we have opposite and adjacent, so which part of Sokotoa is it? That's the Toa part, so that means we're going to be using the tangent function, which is opposite over adjacent. All right, filling in the equation, I'd have tangent of theta equals 168 over 50. Because I'm solving for an angle, I'm going to need to use an inverse trig function. So I could say that the angle theta is the inverse tangent of 168 over 50. This means, using the calculator, that her angle of elevation is 73.43 degrees. So she is looking up at a 73.43 degree angle. Make sense? Okay, let's try a little bit more complicated of a question. In this example, Nancy is in the sky deck of the Sears Tower overlooking Lake Michigan. She sees two sailboats going due east from the tower. The angles of depression to the two boats are 42 degrees and 29 degrees. We also know that the sky deck is 1,335 feet high. We want to know how far apart are the boats. All right, let's draw a picture for this. So here's the Sears Tower, and there's the water, and we got Nancy on top and two boats. Okay, I'm going... Let's see, oh yeah, we, knew, we know that the sky deck is 1,335 feet high. In order to draw the angles of depression, I'm going to need to draw her line of sight to the two boats. So here we go. Here's her line of sight to the first boat. Here's her line of sight to the second boat. Okay, now we need to draw in the two angles of depression, the 42 degree angle and the 29 degree angle. I want to alert you to a common mistake. Don't do this. A common mistake is to put the angle of depression compared to the vertical line of the tower. But remember, the angle of depression is always compared to a horizontal line. So, the 29 degree angle is here. It's always compared to the person looking straight ahead. So the angle of depression to the very last boat is 29 degrees, because that would be, create the smaller of the two angles. The angle of depression to the other boat is 42 degrees. Both of these angles are compared to the horizontal line of her looking straight ahead. Okay, now we can use the fact also that these are congruent to the angle of elevation from the boat to her. So the, a person in the last boat would see her at a 29 degree angle, and someone in the first boat would see her at a 42 degree angle. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. What are we looking for? We're looking for the distance between the two boats, x. Now let me point out another mistake that a lot of people make. The tendency is to use the obtuse triangle and call the, that diagonal line, her first line of sight, the opposite. That is not the case. Remember that trig can only be applied to right triangles. That is until you get to pre-calculus and we'll teach you how. But for now, we're just applying it to right triangles. From the 29 degrees, the opposite side is actually the tower. So you see, we're looking at two right triangles here. The first right triangle is formed between her and the first boat. It has a side of 1,335 1, feet high and a 42 degree angle. Let's call the base of that triangle Y. Then the second right triangle we have is the entire triangle, the big one. Okay, It still uses the tower as the opposite side, but it has a 29 degree angle. Let's call the base of that one Z. So, the whole side Z is divided into parts Y and X. We're looking for X. So if I knew both Z and Y, I could find X. Because if I knew Z, and I subtracted Y, 
I could figure out what the distance is between the two boats, which is x. Okay, so let's kind of put this together. Because I've got a lot drawn here, I'm going to move to another page, and I'll redraw these triangles. Okay, so we have the two triangles. We just need to find y and z. So let's just get to solving. I have an opposite and an adjacent on the first triangle, which means I'll be using the tangent function. Likewise, on the second triangle, I have also an opposite and adjacent, so we'll use the tangent function as well. Indeed, the only difference between the two triangles is the measure of the angle. So, that cre will create the difference between y and z. Filling in the first equation, I'd have tangent of 42 equals 1335 over y. And likewise, for the second function, it looks the same, except I have a 29 degree angle. I'll type those two in the calculator, and I get 0.900 for tangent of 42, and 0.554, that's a weird way to say it, how about 0.554, for tangent of 29. And the other parts remain the same. Hopefully this is old hat to you guys, since we've been practicing a lot. I'll multiply both sides by y, and both sides by z on the two equations, so that way, I, will ha I can have the y and the z out of the denominator. At this point, I need to divide by the 0.900, so that means y is going to be 1482.67, and dividing by 0.554 on that one, z is 2408.40. So, in that triangle, I'll mark off y, which is 1482, and z, the entire side, which is 2408. What are we looking for? We're looking for the distance between the two boats, which is the remainder. Subtracting those two, I get 925.73 feet. Phew, that seemed almost like a marathon problem. But, does it make sense? If not, we'll take a look at some more problems like it during class. Alright, I'll see you guys later.